One of the primary flaws with Kaisar's Legion, identified by fans, is that the faction is not built to last after the death of its founder. Although his second-in-command, Legatus Lanius, assumes the title of Kaisar upon the demise of the original, the longevity of the group is called into question. Many in-game characters claim that the Legion is following Kaisar himself, rather than the ideals of the Legion, and that the nation will descend into fragmented infighting in the years after his death. Kaisar himself shrouds his heir Linnaeus in mystery, claiming that he is not a great man, but a savage general who has no love for the Legion. The other members of the Legion's inner circle each have identifiable flaws that would impact their ability to lead the Legion into its future. However, what if the designated heir had not meant to be chosen from Kaisar's pool of subordinates? What if Kaisar had intended for the Courier to be his heir apparent for the Legion? There are multiple factors that support the Courier being the intended heir for the Legion. However, to start off this video, we'll be beginning at the end of the game. In the endgame slides for the Legion, the Courier is honoured by the Legion with a golden coin, minted in their image. While this could just be considered an innocuous endgame mention, there is a large amount of importance to this. Firstly, in comparison, the NCR issued the Courier with the Golden Branch the highest civilian decoration issued by the Republic. Obviously, this is a big deal. The Courier would be able to return to the NCI hero and earn powerful allies in President Kimball and General Oliver. However, this is not as big of a deal as having a coin issued with your name and face on it. For one, many citizens of the NCR were not fans of the Mojave campaign itself, with the Courier undoubtedly being seen as a living symbol that, despite all the young lives of the Republic men and women thrown into the meat grinder, the area was only annexed due to an external mercenary. Two, the Golden Branch is issued for civilians only, which is fair enough since the Courier isn't actually an NCR citizen. However, it would hold far less prestige compared to actual military honours. The Courier could utilise the clout to make a name for themselves within the NCR, Maybe they join the military or start a career in politics. However, they would still be needing to start this from the beginning in whichever field they go into. The Golden Branch honour would only carry them so far. Thirdly, the actual act of minting the Courier onto the coinage shows how much the Legion values the Courier compared to how the NCR values them. The NCR dollar bills have their founding president Aradesh, their most popular president Tandy, and their first ranger Seth and each represent a core moment to the Republic, such as the Dayglow Incorporation address seen on Tandy's note. The Courier is not included in this illustrious lineup because they have no value to the history or future of the NCR. In comparison, the Legion Denarius shows Kaiser in his youth, as well as co-founder Joshua Graham and Bill Calhoun, who was also instrumental to the Legion's founding. The Legion Aureus portrays an older Kaiser alongside the Bull of the Legion, the Latin inscriptions of these coins symbolise core events of the Legion's history. Magnum Chasma, or Great Abyss, that represents Kaisar's journey to the Grand Canyon and his conquest of the founding tribes, while Eternit Imperi, or For the Eternity of the Empire on the front, and Pax Perbalum, meaning Peace Through War on the back, symbolising the Legion's present. Having a coin minted in their image literally allows the Courier to enter more than the Legion's history. They enter their mythos. They would be equated the same as their founding demigod, the Son of Mars, or their demonic co-founder, the Burn Man, something more than the common legionary. Despite being his second-in-command and successor, Linnaeus is not minted with any coinage. According to Joshua Sawyer, the planned coin was meant to be a double aurus, depicting a conquered General Oliver on the front and an image of the Courier on the back. The coin was meant to mirror that of the Vercingetorix Denarii minted by the original Julius Caesar after conquering the Gauls. Ultimately, the most obvious point is that as a scholar of the Roman Empire, Caesar understands the importance that minting of coinage had during the ancient Roman period. Coins were basically propaganda tools, with the populace of the empire only really becoming familiar with their new emperor once their minted coins became issued. The Courier being minted onto one of these is a deliberate act by Kaisar to allow the Courier to enter the history of the Legion itself and legitimise them as a leader in the eyes of its subjects and soldiers. Now, the act of minting a coin in their honour is one taken after the Courier has fought for and proven their loyalty to the Legion, 
Yet even from the beginning, Kaiser shows great interest in the Courier. He learns of their survival against Benny, and keeps track of their many adventures and actions across the Mojave, seeing them as an individual who can accomplish tasks when they set their mind to it. To this end, they're notably the first of the Dissolute, or non-Legion, to ever receive an audience with Kaiser, even if they are a woman. However, Kaiser displays not only interest, but also great restraint for the Courier. This is particularly interesting given that Kaiser is known as a brutal and unforgiving warlord who orders his own men to slit their throats rather than fail and fall captive to the enemy. He had his closest friend, the former legate Joshua Graham, lit on fire and thrown into the Grand Canyon to show that failure will not be tolerated even at the highest levels. Yet the Curio is able to fail and disappoint Kaiser a number of times and be safe from his wrath. If actions are taken against the Legion prior to being given the mark of Kaiser, such as destroying Legion outposts, having the Great Khans break their alliance, and even if the Curia has killed the head of the Frumentari, Volpes and Coulter, these crimes will be forgiven. While working for the Legion, the Curia can fail in a multitude of the tasks given to them by Kaiser, such as failing to bring the White Glove Society and the Boomers into an alliance with the Legion. Even if the Curia is unable to assassinate President Kimball, they can still return to Kaiser without fear of being executed. He does make a point to say that, if not for all the services rendered previously, he would have had them crucified. However, this is still the case even if he failed to complete the most basic of tasks issued. The Curio can question Kaiser when ordered to assassinate Kimball. Kaiser responds that he doesn't have to explain his orders, he just gives them and his subordinates need to carry them out. However, he then makes an exception and explains why this order needs to be carried out. The Curio can even undermine Kaiser within his own fortress, declaring that they'll no longer work for him. Despite having his authority undermined in front of his inner circle and Praetorian Guard, he still states that he will give you one more chance to work for him. Most interestingly, he states that if the Curio is serious, they should leave with haste and forget everything that he could have given them. It's important to note that while modelled on ancient Rome, the Legion is functionally a slave army. Legionaries under Kaiser are not like officers of ancient Rome. They don't get to retire, they don't receive honours or parades as a reward for military service. At most, they may be given access to slaves of their own that will serve under them directly, but even Centurions are still technically slave soldiers of Kaiser. Their only real direct reward is to be promoted up the hierarchy, where they're simply given greater responsibility and equipment, yet face far closer scrutiny if they fail to carry out his will. Some legionaries would find no greater reward than to accept more risks in fulfilling Kaiser's orders, yet this would be largely due to their brainwashing from birth. The Curia is an outsider to the Legion. Service to Kaiser is not a reward in itself, but the means to a reward. And while the Legion do have their own currency, they also don't hold that much stock in capitalism or consumerism. The all that Kaiser referenced that could be given to the Curia in reward for their service may in fact be just that, all. Okay, so Kaiser goes a little easier on the Curia than his other officers. Maybe this is simply due to the fact that he knows that the Curia is an incredibly capable individual who can assist his empire in their conquest of the Mojave. Indeed, when the Curia leaves for the second battle of Hoover Dam, Kaiser does tell them to come back victorious or don't come back at all. However, although Kaiser does essentially see everyone as a tool that he can use, the Curia included, he does treat them far differently than anyone else within his legion, potentially because he sees himself within them. A description of Kaiser by Joshua Sawyer, lead designer of Fallout New Vegas, is as follows. Kaiser, or Edward Sallow as he was born, was an extremely intelligent, well-educated man captured by an alien culture, and he did what he needed to not only to survive, but to dominate that culture and eventually become its leader. Edward was a follower of the Apocalypse Anthropologist who was captured by a Grand Canyon tribe. Unwilling to die in their battles with other warring tribals, Edward used his advanced knowledge to become leader of the tribe and lead its warriors in combat against their opposition. Crowning himself as Kaiser, he continued to destroy and absorb the tribes to create his legion, a group strong enough to survive in the post-war world. He utilised his knowledge of ancient Rome to institute a culture that was alien to this nation of reconditioned tribals claiming that the inspiration for the Legion was ordained by the god of war Mars himself, with Kaiser deifying himself as the son of Mars. The Curia mirrors Kaiser in a way. 
They too were thrust into an unforgiving environment that they were unprepared for. Shot, then left for dead. In a situation that would break most people, Kaiser and the courier chose instead to turn the situation not only to their advantage, but into their destiny. Even Linnaeus states that it was the two bullets that gave them the strength to match the Legion. And like Kaiser, the Curia is an external addition to the Legion, removed from its original source culture. Even as its leader, Kaiser himself is markedly different from his men. He is the only one within the Legion who does not speak in a formal, bookish manner. He openly swears and uses lazy language in his conversation. However, most interestingly, Kaiser is quick to converse with the Curia on information that very few individuals, even within the Legion itself, would know of. Kaiser's primary fear is being found out for being a fraud, that the entire culture he created was actually transplanted from the Roman Empire. Most wastelanders or tribals have no concept of ancient Rome, but there are many groups, such as the followers of the Apocalypse, that know Kaiser is not a demigod, he's just a man. And there's no doubt that even the upper echelons of his legion believe that he is the son of the god of war, destined to rule the world through divine will. When Linnea succeeds Kaiser, the endgame slides state that the followers are brutally murdered for defaming the original Kaiser's noble origins, stating that he had been born in the NCI himself, a profligate. Linnaeus even refers to Kaiser as the son of Mars and makes sacrifices to the god, so he is evidently a devout believer. Yet in Kaiser's first conversations with the courier, he is completely honest about his history. He tells them that he was born in the NCR. His father was killed by raiders, and his mother worked for the followers of the Apocalypse, who he subsequently joined. He is upfront that he used Imperial Rome as a template for the Legion because it's so alien and unknown. The reason for all this explanation may just be that Kaiser knows that the courier knows he isn't the son of a god. And this is probably why he is pleased that the courier honours him with his proper title when he first meets him. He appreciates that, although the courier is not the same as his legionaries, they're willing to play the same role. Yet he also explains the ins and outs of many different parts of his legion. He explains the role of the Praetorian Guard, his Frumentari Intelligence Corp, the individual histories of his top tier commanders, the culture of the legion, he basically gives the courier an induction course similar to an incoming manager. Most importantly, he explains what is ultimately the crux of his and his legion's destiny, to conquer the NCR and combine its civilian infrastructure with the legion's military to create a long-lasting new empire. The method of which is based on Hegelian dialectics, in which the thesis of the legion and the antithesis of the NCR will create a synthesis between the two. Kaiser takes the time to carefully explain each step of this plan, as well as to elaborate on the discourse method of Hegelian dialectics itself. He is upfront that the legion we see is not its final form, and that only through this will it become the civilization it needs to be. The courier may be one of the tiny percent of people to ever hear this information, apart from Kaiser's inner circle, but there may also be the even smaller percentile who actually understands it, as even if Kaiser had explained his plans to his acknowledged heir, Legatus Linnaeus, it appears Linnaeus either doesn't understand it, or does not care for it. Linnaeus is Kaiser's second in command, and he is the one to assume control of the Legion in the event of Kaiser's death. Linnaeus is a man shrouded in mystery, his backstory is contradicted by many members of the Legion, who each tell a different version of the story. Former Legion members such as Ulysses or Joshua Graham aren't sure it's the same man under the mask, or don't even know him at all. However, Kaiser's assessment of his own right-hand man leads us to think that he himself is doubtful of Linnaeus' ability to lead. Kaiser describes him as a savage and unworthy of being declared a great man. He states that he is loyal only to Kaiser rather than the Legion itself and has no love for the nation he is one of the leaders of. Kaiser's perception of Linnaeus appears to be that he views him as an incredibly effective tool, but a tool nonetheless. It's unknown if Kaiser had attempted to explain to Linnaeus his grand plan for the synthesis with the NCR. The post-game end slides immediately display the stark differences in leadership and rule between the two. For example, Kaiser recognises the Enclave remnants are not worth pursuing, while Linnaeus loses hundreds of men chasing them down. Kaiser allows the followers to leave safely, while Linnaeus hunts them for daring to state that Kaiser was not a god. The key difference, 
and the one that supports the idea that Linnaeus may not have truly been the intended heir in Kaiser's mind stems from their actions upon laying claim to the prize jewel of the entire war, New Vegas. In Kaiser's ending, he enters the New Vegas Strip as if it was his triumph, savouring the fact that his roaming, nomadic tribe is one step closer to following in his predecessor's footsteps. New Vegas will be their new Rome, the heart of the Empire. It won't be destroyed or damaged, it'll be claimed and synthesised. New Vegas is more than just a stronghold of a faction that opposed them. It's the first step in the Legion's journey towards the Legion's development as a true and proper civilization. One that will be strong and stable enough to lead humanity into a new future. Whereas when Linnaeus succeeds Kaiser, he attacks the Strip as if it's a military target. He murders its inhabitants, destroys their buildings and accomplishments, and enslaves the rest. He has no concept of Rome, or the importance of laying down the roots for a capital city. New Vegas is essentially the same as any other tribe or group that the Legion has conquered. An area to be pillaged and looted before moving on to the next target. Another possible clue that Linnaeus either doesn't understand Hegelian dialectics or Kaiser had never told him of the grand plan is that he can be talked down at the end of the game if you tell him that the NCR would change the Legion by losing the Eastern Territories by bringing the entire army to conquer the new California Republic and secure it, effectively changing the Legion from what it currently is into something entirely new. To halt the attack on Hoover Dam and reconsolidate control over their Eastern Territories might not be a horrible idea. It does show that Linnaeus is far more intelligent than previously considered, even potentially by Kaiser himself, as he's able to objectively face the fact that winning the war might lead to his defeat due to non-military reasons. He vows to return to the West at some point in the future, when the Legion is ready to conquer the lands of the Mojave and California. Again, sound battle strategy. However, the synthesized change of how the Legion works is exactly what Kaiser's plan is. If Linnaeus doesn't know this and actually fears the change, then that can indicate that Kaiser hasn't explained his plans for the synthesis at all. Linnaeus is again far more intelligent than given credit for, but it would be difficult for a reconditioned tribal, glorified as the monster of the East, to grasp not only the discourse method of a 19th century German philosopher, but also Kaiser's interpretation of it. Instead, Kaiser seems to only ever inform the courier of his driving philosophy. The courier, who's also the first of the dissolute to receive the mark of Kaiser. The courier, who like Kaiser, is an outsider who can give themselves over entirely to the Legion. An individual from the West, who can utilize their advanced knowledge and experience to lead the tribes of the East to glory. A person who can understand all that the Legion is, and all that it could be. The Legion is a group that prides itself on its martial prowess, which is naturally why Linnaeus is the most obvious heir to the throne. But it is wrong to claim that brute strength alone is what makes the Legion strong. Volpus and Coulter's intelligence and cunning has paved the way for many of the Legion's victories. Kaiser's wisdom and charisma allowed him to conquer a territory encompassing four states. The Legion is at its strongest when all its strengths work together in unison, and there is one individual who is able to display each of these. A courier who is the most worthy heir to assume the mantle of Kaiser. True to courier.